What would you do if you won the lottery? Would you quit your job immediately? Would you build the world's most ridiculous personal library? It's fun to think about, and it's probably something a lot of Americans were thinking about last year when the lottery was at a record high of nearly a billion dollars. But we know that the lottery has a dark side too. There are so many documentaries and television shows and news articles about how winning the lottery actually ruined people's lives. But what does this have to do with John Steinbeck's 1947 novella, The Pearl? Well, in The Pearl, there's a character named Kino and he's a poor fisherman. He basically lives in a hut with his wife and his son and he's very content with his life. And in the story, Kino finds what they call the pearl of the world and it's worth an insane insane amount of money. Essentially, it's like hitting the jackpot or winning the lottery. Knowing that this pearl is worth so much money, Kino starts to daydream about sending his son Coyotito to school to get an education, something that people from his station in life don't often do, or buying a rifle or building a new house. But from there, it's not long before Kino's luck turns into tragedy and people trying to take advantage of him. Despite being less than 100 pages long, The Pearl demonstrates John Steinbeck's intuition, his prescience, and his understanding of class disparity. What's interesting is it's almost like a story of someone winning the lottery, except the modern day lottery as we know it didn't exist for almost another 20 years, with the first modern day lottery in the US actually being in my home state of New Hampshire in the 60s. Yet despite that, Steinbeck was able to so accurately depict how coming into a large sum of money can negatively impact someone's life. But Steinbeck does really well to highlight that it it's not that people aren't mentally equipped to handle this money, it's that there are systems of oppression in place that help keep people poor. For example, in the book, Kino has no safe place to store the pearl until he can sell it to a broker. When he does go to sell it to a broker, he has no way of knowing if the price he's being offered is fair, and he has no means of transportation to get to another city to work with other brokers to compare prices. And then of course, people come out of the woodwork, like a doctor who says he can help treat Coyote for a scorpion sting, but Kino doesn't even know if his son needs that treatment, if it's effective, or if what the doctor is charging him is a fair price for that service. You might think that today would be different if someone who's very impoverished came into a lot of money, but it's not really. I've heard stories of people losing their entire lottery winnings on bad business investments, or people being told to invest their money into certain markets, and those markets being highly volatile, and them losing all of their winnings. The world might look a lot different today than it did in John Steinbeck's The Pearl, but a lot of these systems of oppression are still in place. And strangely enough, this story reminded me of renewing my license last year. I received a notice in the mail telling me that my license was due to expire and I had the ability to go online and book an appointment to go get it renewed. Now, everyone hates the DMV. It has a reputation of being one of the worst places on earth. And when I went in for my appointment, there were literally hundreds of people in the waiting room. And I was able to bypass all of those people waiting because I had a pre-booked appointment. And when I was waiting the five minutes before I was called, I overheard someone on the phone telling someone else that they had already been waiting for over three hours and there were still dozens of people in line ahead of them. Now think about this. Maybe you don't have internet, so you can't even get online to pre-book your appointment. Or maybe you do have internet, but you just don't have a reliable means of transportation, so you can't guarantee that you'll get to the DMV for your appointment and on time. So you have to do a walk-in appointment. And because you're doing a walk-in appointment, you don't know how long you're going to be there. So these people probably had to take the entire day off from work. Something that only took me less than 30 minutes start to finish took these people in entire day. And because I'm an entrepreneur, my income is not directly tied to the amount of time that I work. But if you have to take off a whole day from work, your pay that week is going to be a fifth less than it normally is. So that $50 license renewal now becomes a several hundred dollar cost to you. And if you're in a situation where you don't have internet or you don't have reliable transportation, several hundred dollars is probably very significant to you. While Steinbeck's intuition and foresight is extremely impressive, 
and while he does a great job of outlining class disparity, I think it's more sad that here we are 80 years on and we're still struggling with the same issues of Steinbeck's day. Overall, I'd give The Pearl a five out of five rating. It was extremely emotionally impactful despite being really so short. And because it's so short, there's really no reason not to read it. Most people could probably read it in one sitting. Check out this video right here that we did on his work, A Russian Journal.